Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers review for Episode 3 of the Shudder Creepshow series. Yes, I've been watching these ahead of time because Shudder was nice enough to give me screener copies for these, so I have them about a week ahead of their actual release on every Thursday. Um, go back and watch my uh, reviews for Episodes 1 and 2 if you haven't seen those because um, I kind of... I feel like it's important to kind of work through all of these and know all of the episodes at the same time, especially because at the end of each of these episodes, I'm kind of breaking down. Here's my list of least to, to most favorite of these individual episodes. Well, not individual episodes, but the individual, individual stories within the episode since they're doing two stories per episode. So let's talk about episode three. Um, overall, uh, it's like a half and half. So the first story, oh, well, actually, first of all, I need to say the creep in the beginning, their kind of mascot, his little intro for this one is the best of his little snippets of film yet. I thought it was clever and a little bit funny and creepy at the same time. I was going to say scary, but I'm like, is that, it's actually not scary. Not a whole lot actually like scares me in horror anymore. So, okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's talk about uh, the first story, All Hallows' Eve is what it's called. It was written by Bruce Jones, which I wasn't able to find any IMDb credits for Bruce Jones, so I don't really know what he's been involved with before. Uh, directed by John Harrison, who did the short for the Creepshow series, The House of the Head, and he did a really good job directing that. Go back and watch the episode one uh, review that I put on here because I talk about a lot about that and his directing and how good it was. Um, he's also been involved with Tales from the Crypt in the past and Tales from the Dark Side as well, so he's very used to this kind of anthology layout. The acting in this one is okay. It's just okay. And that's kind of happened in a few of the other ones, but um, it's not bad. It's not good. It's this very in-between thing where you're kind of like, at moments you're like, that was good. They nailed those lines. And then at other moments you're like, that doesn't sound too good. They didn't do a great job there. So it's uh, the directing is solid. I have no problem with the directing in this. Um, so John Harrison continuing with what he's doing. Uh, so the thing I like about the story is that it gives you this nice kind of like trick-or-treating nostalgia. You could assume that based off of it being called All Hallows' Eve. It's about, you know, there's a trick-or-treating aspect to it, which, um, you know, like people who love Halloween and have positive thoughts and memories about uh, Halloween, like myself, it's my favorite holiday, I just love when that's incorporated into film. So it just immediately makes me feel nostalgic and makes me feel a little bit of something for the film. So that said, um, well, actually, real quick, the music actually matches particularly well in this one. I think this is probably one of the best musical matchups for what's actually going on in the story. So it's kind of like light and a little bit whimsical, but it's also kind of creepy at the same time. I think it matches very, very well. Now comes to some of the issues. The dialogue seems a little bit stilted at times and more proper than people would actually use, especially because these are younger kids in this. You know, they're teenagers for the most part. There's some grown-ups in it, but it's mainly teenagers in this in this story. And um, they 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 say things like "gracious no." no, absolutely not. And there's a lot of lines like that. There's a lot of dialogue that that doesn't actually match the age group that you're dealing with here and the personalities of who these people are. So <clears throat> there's a real issue with, with Bruce Jones and his dialogue writing, unless, unless that's not the dialogue, because sometimes they'll kind of let people improvise, or sometimes they'll kind of change things last minute, and it's the director, it's not the writer. So I don't know for sure, but I assume that that's the way the script was written and the dialogue is just not very good to be honest in at certain moments like it's totally fine at other moments it, it like strikes you in these ones where it's like gracious no and it takes you out of the story because it hits you as being so odd and out of place and it just does not match or fit so that's a big issue that that i saw um i, I saw things coming immediately with this story there's there's not a whole lot of mystery for me personally maybe for for other people who watch it I saw where it was going immediately, no hesitation. Um, so, you know, not to say that that's bad because if you execute it properly, then it can still be satisfying, but I don't think it was executed all that well, to be honest. 
the, and then that comes to my next note. The story was, eh. I mean, it wasn't a bad story, but it wasn't a good story. It was kind of just like, that's a story. And overall, I just kind of feel like that particular story in the Creepshow series is, it's like, okay, I watched it. Moving on. Uh, you don't have a lot of time with this, is what I, I'm, I'm reading one of my notes I put down. You don't have a lot of time, so you need to use it wisely. It seems like they had to add stuff in order to hit a certain runtime for this, which that is a huge problem if that's what was the case when you're clocking in at like 20 minutes. Uh, it really seems like they just kind of had a little bit of wasting time here and there because the story itself is so light. There's not a whole lot to the actual story when they could have actually put a lot to this story because the premise can really work. And it's, it's not like a super new premise. I've seen it done before. But if you can take a premise that's old and, and put an interesting spin on it, which there's there's some ideas of an interesting spin in this, but it's just not executed well. So, you know, overall, this is actually my least favorite of all the stories I've watched thus far through the six because we're halfway through, you know, after episode three or halfway through the Creep Show series. It's my least favorite. I didn't like it. Um, then we go to the second story for episode three, which I did quite like, and this is a prime example of taking an old story, a story that's been done actually quite a few times, at least that I know of, and putting a twist to it, doing something a little bit new, making it a little bit fresh, updating it in a sense. And I think this one works, and this is one of the better ones in my opinion, and it is called The Man in the Suitcase. Now, the person who wrote it is Christopher, Christopher Buellman, and I can find no credits for this individual except for Creepshow. So this is kind of a new person, a relative unknown, and it's a good start for this individual because I liked the script. I thought the story was good. I thought the dialogue was good. Um, a lot of things with the script working well. The pacing, well, that's part script, that's part directing, that's part editing. So, uh, But the pacing was good. It was directed by David Bruckner. I like David Bruckner. He's done The Signal. He did Ritual, which was a Netflix film. Both of those films uh, I think are very good. I really, really enjoy both of those films. If you have not seen Ritual or The Signal, definitely see them. They're, uh, the Signal's kind of like zombie film-esque, but it's kind of smarter than that, and it's got its kind of own take on things, and I, and I find it very refreshing within a kind of kind of zombie film genre. Uh, that one's really good, and the ritual, the ritual is really cool and atmospheric and can be scary at times, but the creature in the ritual is awesome design, in my opinion. One of the better designs, so it's those we're seeing. So this had good acting. This had good to quite good acting. This, it, was, it was well done. The performances really helped out with the story and selling the script. Uh, it starts in a mysteriously playful way, which I really, really liked. So it gives it a little bit of a quirkiness in the beginning. It ends up uh, incorporating some comedy to it, but it's also very serious. And it's, and it's kind of at the heart of it, this real moral story. And, you know, it's an older moral story that's kind of been used a lot. But like I said, it, it puts its own twist on it and it does it in its own way. And the comedy stuff that's put into it works. It works very well. And everything feels appropriate for the characters in there, for what the tone of the story is. It all matches. So there's some interesting and fun camera angles in this. So Bruckner, I thought, did a really cool job of just keeping the look of it and the feel of it interesting through his directing style and the cinematography. Um, you know, we, there were some, uh, a few shots that are kind of like from the floor angle kind of at like an angle going up, so it's kind of like off kilter. And you would think that those might be a little disorienting and a little weird, but they just looked good. And it kind of like keeps you, I feel like it keeps you more engaged. It makes you more aware that there is a style and there is a particular approach to the directing and the camera work. And I like that. Uh, there, uh, Like I said, there's good humor mixed in. Uh, interesting premise, good writing, nice directing. Um, yeah, new twist on an old premise. And then there's some actually good tension in this film that actually revolves a lot around morality. Like I was saying, it's kind of like a moral tale. Um, but there, the tension in particular um, is involved around the morality of what's going on. And uh, yeah, overall, I really liked this story. I thought it was quite good. Now, 
Okay, I got to give ratings. Um, I was going to say for individual uh, on, a, on a five star scale with half stars in play for um, the first one, All Hallows Eve, I'm going to give it a two, no, one and a half, one and a half stars. Not so great. Not terrible, but not not very good either. Um, and for the man in the suitcase, I'm going to give it I'm gonna give three and a half. I'm going to give it a three and a half star. I, li I like it. It's pretty good. So then here I'm going to do my breakdown of thus far of all six stories that I've watched through my ranking list. Last one in sixth place, All Hallows' Eve. This, the fifth place, Gray Matter. Uh, fourth, or fourth place, Bad Wolf Down. Third place, Man in the Suitcase. Second place, House of the Head. And first place, The Finger. So there you have it. Thank you for checking this out. Um, I'm going to continue on with Creep Show, so keep looking for these reviews. We only have three more left, so it's a little bit sad. I like going through this, and even though you hit stories that you're you're not into or you don't think are good, uh, it then bounces back, and that actually kind of seems to be what's going on. It's They lead each episode with one that's not that great or just okay, and then they finish it with one that is quite good or really good. So I'm, interesting, I'm interested to see if that continues but we'll find out but thanks again for watching this hit that subscribe for me please uh that that would really help me out a lot you can give me some money if you want to through patreon although i don't quite expect that uh you can just search carlin cook or horror movie reviews with carlin cook on patreon but the big thing is give me that subscribe it really really helps encourage me to keep these going and it can help my channel in the long run but put some comments down there when you see the episode and let's compare notes let's talk about our feelings on it and also, are you excited for it? So anyway, thanks again, and until next time, keep it brutal.